cut that. <laughs> Don't use that bit. Is this, you're going to cut this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. great. <laughs> Hello, my name is Amy Astrid, and today we are at the Bottle Factory, which is where the Curious Case of Benjamin Button are currently rehearsing, and they're going to let us have a little sneak peek. The Curious Case of Benjamin Button started its life as a short story by F. Scott Fitzgerald, and then got turned into the wildly successful 2008 film, and now is being transported to a Cornish fishing village and put on London's West End. So, they are currently about a week out of opening night, and we're going to go and have a little chat with some of the cast and creatives. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, uh, my name is John Dudleish, and I'm playing Benjamin Button. And I'm Claire Foster, playing Alolan. I'm going to start off with a bit of a strange question. Obviously, Great. Benjamin Button is about uh, Benjamin Button who ages backwards. If you could pick one age to stay forever, what would you pick? Forever? Ooh. <laughs> I'm going to go somewhere early 30s. That makes me feel good because I've not been there yet. Okay. <laughs> yeah, in the 30s, okay. 30s are fun. Yeah, like 32 or something I would probably get. Right. Uh, because you're sort of past, well, this is my idea anyway, you're kind of past the sort of like, who am I, I feel insecure about everything, and then you start to feel like you're a bit more in control of your life, but you're also like, there's still adventure ahead. It feels... That's a good one. It was a, it was a good age. It's just a good yeah. age for me. Aren't you? Yeah, I, yeah, probably like two or three years ago. Okay. I'm going to let everyone work out. <laughs> But just, just, um, yeah, I felt really good, really healthy, you know. <laughs> like Claire said, the, the, the experience of youth behind you and then all the wonderful, wonderful things yet to come while knowing yourself, but still being kind of fit and healthy and vital. Yeah. You know? Okay, cool. <laughs> what can we expect to see from this production of Curious Face Benjamin Button? I would describe it as a, a beautiful love story to life. Uh, it's a lovely way to with, yeah. with amazing music. Incredible, incredible, Celt beautiful, like Celtish folk. Celtish folk? Celtish. Celtish. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's stunning. And um, the, the performers that we've all left downstairs to come and do these interviews <laughs> are incredible. The most remarkable people that we could be so lucky to share a West End stage with. Uh, yeah, it's like an amazing combination oh. of lots of wonderful factors mm. the book is sensational and then you hear the music and you're like that's amazing and then you hear the orchestration so you're like that's like next level um and then on top of that we get to sort of play entire life stories in one sitting yeah. and it's just it's a profoundly beautiful story mm. and very human and you know looking at people's flaws as well as the things that they bring out each other it's yeah. special and is there, I mean, I imagine playing someone over their entire lifetime is quite challenging. What would you say is the biggest kind of challenge in the show in general or in that? Probably my neck. <laughs> Tortoise neck. <laughs> Tortoise neck. Neck. <laughs> neck work. <laughs> I would do like weights with my neck. Um, I think probably um, just like not trying to overdo it. I think sometimes you kind of go, no, for me anyway, <laughs> I think that is what's kind of hard is like to not overdo the, I now need to be an old lady because actually people don't really yeah. change as vastly yeah. as we kind yeah. of think they might. I think physically more than mentally, you know, I yeah. think we all, we all have this illusion when we're growing up that we're going to suddenly become adults yeah. and we never really do. Like, yeah, think, <laughs> it's true. You know, looking at pictures of my parents when they were kind of much younger than me with me and my sister as babies, you just think, God, they're just children raising, raising children. Yeah, you know? yeah. Which again is like one of the big themes of shows, like mm -hmm. that, you know, are we old or young or both at the same time? You know, that those things are, are not definable. Mm -hmm. yeah. We can be all of them all at the same yeah. time. And also just like trying to not break down because it's very. <laughs> That's been the hard hardest part of the yeah. isn't it? It's just some, sometimes just a little musical theme will come in and you just feel yourself. Yeah. Off. So we're trying to just desensitise ourselves yeah. to it now so that we can get through the <laughs> yeah. It's not even the stuff you think it is, it's no, well. no. just be a chord or something that comes in in the illustrations yeah. that just sort of hits you. Yeah. But, um, yeah, bring a tissue for sure. I was going to say, do you think I'm going to cry? I cry at everything. So well, there's no hope. Well, in that case, definitely. We've done our jobs if we... Yeah. 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 Oh, brilliant. We will be at the Ambassador's Theatre in town and 
previewing from the 10th of October and we open officially on the 6th of November. Please come and see us and then tell all your friends and get them to come and see it as well because <laughs> it's remarkable. My name is Jethro Copton. I'm one of the producers, I uh, read the book and co-wrote the lyrics, and I'm the director and set designer of The Curious Case for Benjamin Button. Uh, and I'm Darren Clark, and I wrote the music and co-wrote the lyrics, and am the co-orchestrator and arranger and musical supervisor of Benjamin Button. Wow, that's quite the, the CV on both of you. So, obviously this is a story that spans a really long period of time, what are the challenges in terms of the writing in making sure that that whole story gets its moment? Yeah, I think I mean, it covers about 70 years and it's trying to work out how you know, those episodes that you zoom in on and which moments and there are sections of the show that, that actually there's 20-30 you know, minutes that cover one night, one evening um, and there are moments that cover 10 years and 30 seconds. Um, and so it, it's trying to make sure that even when time moves forward that the sort of emotional drive and journey of the characters connects and that the audience is with them on that in that same emotional beat even if time has moved forward. Yeah, it's like going on a motorway and stopping in the services every now and again. Yeah. There's travelling moments and there's like focused moments. Like partly about choosing which moments to focus on. Really, isn't it? And how would you describe their music? Um, <laughs> so I've heard some very lovely things from the actors <laughs> for you. <laughs> it's, um, so it, it's inspired by um, Celtic folk, English folk, Cornish um, folk, I think. Cornish folk, Cornish <laughs> folk, as well as English folk. Um, but also by sort of like a lot of pop songwriting, um, Simon Joe Mitchell storytelling sort of people. Um, it's, it's, I think it uses all sorts of the techniques of like big bellowing raucous um, things that folk can do and also the delicate beautiful things that folk can do and, and sort of in a way everything in between um, but it, like, at its heart it's always the music is always focused on telling the story as much as possible. Yeah that's a good thing. And what is it that's really unique to this project? Money. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Yeah, so I'd been looking to make a musical and knew that I wanted to make a Cornish musical and something in the folk world and didn't know what the story would be but knew the sort of setting and, and the, the, the world of it and then was researching various stories that had, were in the public domain and, and came across the Curious Case Mending Button and um, for a little while hadn't connected the two projects but I knew I wanted to create a stage version of bedroom button and knew I wanted to create a Cornish musical and then at some point realised actually those two projects could be the same project. Um, I think what drew me to it is that it's, it's a sh you know, the, the F. Scott Fitzgerald short story has a really great concept at the heart of it but that it's a, it's a very flawed short story and it only gives you sort of a snapshot and it's quite cold and unloving and, and I always think that working from source material that you're not totally in love with gives you freedom within adaptation in the way that when you're when you just think something is the perfect short story or a perfect novel you think well why try to put that on stage why to do why attempt to do your own version of it if it's perfect in its in its medium i think with a, a short story that's that yeah that you think there's a great essence in it um but it's not more than that allowed me the freedom to sort of take it in the direction that it's now gone in. that's really interesting i think Part, mainly really it was Jethro's decision to set it in in a Cornish fishing village. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, and sort of um, because I think if someone had approached me just with the idea of Benjamin Button, the musical, I really wouldn't have known where to start. Mm -hmm. But because it was, the, the idea was that it was going to be folk, you know, Jethro had already decided it was going to be folk work, um, that, that it made it, that, that that's, and that's where my sort of heart lies, is folk music, I love writing folk music, so that's, um, that's what drives me to. Thank you so much, I think we are going to get Thank you. Right, you ready guys? Day button! <laughs> We just had our little sneak peek in rehearsals and wasn't able to record it. 
um, because it's all top secret and under wraps but trust me it is really good it was cool to see the like active rehearsal Jess is here as well yeah and I was saying when they need to just like stop and go back and rehearse a bit the fact that they can just go into like a random line of a random song so quickly is so impressive they're so talented so a lot of these are the, the performers they're playing instruments multiple instruments most of them they're singing they're moving when they started changing instruments I was like how do you how can you do so many yeah, things yeah it was crazy so well? they, they must all be absolutely insanely talented and I found it really interesting to watch how collaborative it yes. was as well. Like they were all talking about like how the they think the best way to do things is. Like changing yeah. tiny little bits yeah. that by the time it gets to the stage, you won't know that those conversations have happened. Yeah. But they feel like at this stage they're really important conversations to have. Yeah. It was oh it was so good and yeah, I can't wait to watch it. And if you have seen it by the time you're watching this video, let me know what you think.